This video is a continuation of important modify commands. I'm going to start with copy paste, which is a very commonly used and important function to transfer parts of one CAD file to another CAD file. Obviously, you can uh, use copy paste with the same shortcuts and it has the same basic concept as pasting text in Word or uh, Notepad or any other text editing uh, program in Windows. So the same method works with pasting portions of CAD files between different projects. And this is a big time saver when you want to save yourself from having to redraw something. So I have this detail, a uh, roof parapet detail, and I want to paste it over into another CAD file that I already have open. Use the control tab to switch back and forth between my two files. I can select all the stuff that I want to copy paste, and then I'm going to do the standard window shortcut of control C and then um, hit control tab to switch files and then the standard window shortcut of control v as in victory in order to paste now it's not pasted quite yet it's attached to the mouse cursor so that i can zoom in a little and click where i want it to be placed so i can click there and then it will be placed at that certain location so that's an easy way to get objects from one drawing to another now something to keep in mind if you have um, similar layer names, dimension styles, text styles, etc. When you paste the information, it's going to inherit the properties of the layers, dimension styles, text styles, etc. that are in the destination file. So if you had the same layer in both files, but in one layer it was one color or line weight, and then the new file it's another color or line weight, it's going to pick up the properties of the layer in the destination file. And that's true for the text and dimension style and other uh, annotation as well. So if there was different font, it would pick up the uh, style in the destination file when you paste it. So keep that in mind. Now, another important, uh, there's a couple other important options when it comes to using copy paste. Uh, you can find copy paste on your ribbon. It may or may not have a separate panel. You can see how I have a clipboard panel here on my home ribbon depends a little bit on which version of AutoCAD you're using. Uh, normally when you're in AutoCAD architecture, it doesn't show up as a separate panel, but it's buried on the modify panel. So you might have to look there, but it should be in one of those two locations. So you'll see the icons there for cut, copy, and paste, which again are the standard Windows tools. But you also have some other options if you hit the little pull down there uh, next to paste, such as paste to original coordinates, and paste as block. So those are both very handy options. Paste to original coordinates I use a lot if I have two plans and the plans are in the same point relative to zero, zero, and I'm pasting something from one level of the building to another level of the same building and I want it to align, like let's say an elevator. So I have the plans in the same position relative to zero, zero, and I have the elevator on the first floor and I want to paste it onto the second floor. Then you can hit paste to original coordinates and it drops it into the same point in model space relative to where it was when you originally had it in the uh, original file. So that's very handy. Paste as a block I use if I'm pasting a really large object with a lot of complicated pieces and I want to be able to easily move it around a little bit before I find its final destination point. So then I can paste it as a block, move it around very easily as a block and then explode it when I'm ready to and then uh, that way it's easier to get it uh, located where I want. One other important option when it comes to copy pasting is copy with base point. You, you can kind of use it similar to paste to original coordinates, but you, what if you're copying from one plan to another, but the plans aren't in the same position relative to zero, zero in model space. When I'm over here, rather than doing the regular copy, I can do copy with base point. So there's uh, not an easy icon for that right there in the ribbon. So all I'm gonna do is control shift C and you can see it says specify base point. So I already have my object selected. Rather than just control C, I hit control shift C and then I can click whatever base point I want. So I'm just gonna click the corner there. And then when I switch files and paste, regular paste, you can see that the point that I have a hold of relative to the objects that are being pasted is that corner that I used as the base point. So again, that's very handy if you have a reference point that you wanna have in common between your original file, uh, where you're pasting from, and where you're pasting to. 
So there's a little review on copy paste. The next modify command I'm going to go over is the join command. Join isn't uh, one that I use real, real often, but it is handy when you want to combine multiple lines into one. So obviously there is uh, the join option in the polyline edit command. Um, so that is great if it's a polyline, that works fine. But what if it's just two lines and I want to join the two together? Because if you ever have one line and then you have another line, you know, collinear, and they both have the same properties, same layer and line weight and color and all that, it's really a better habit to have that joined as one line rather than two. So I could delete one and lengthen the other. That would be one option. Or you can use the join command. So I'm going to do J space. And then I basically just select these two lines and then hit enter or space or right click. And now it's joined them together as one. So that's an easy way to clean up if you have two lines that are collinear and you uh, would prefer that they're one, which is always the case if they have the same properties. You can use join to easily merge them together into one object. So that's an alternative to polyline edit with the join option, which still works fine in those cases. The next modify command that I'm going to go over is chamfer. I went over the fillet command earlier, but I didn't do chamfer at the same time. That's because fillet, I think, is a little more common in terms of getting your corners to be cleaned up. Chamfer will give you a beveled corner between any two entities. And uh, it's great if you want to angle off a corner in terms of uh, like you're doing furniture design or something, or if you're actually drawing a floor plan and you want to kind of bevel off the corner of a room in that way. I have two lines here that are 10 feet long. So the example I'm showing you is more of like a, a floor plan example where you want to bevel the corner off. So I'm going to do the chamfer command, which is available in the ribbon under the fillet. There's chamfer. Or I can type CHA for chamfer. Now, when you start the chamfer command, you need to pay attention to the command line to see what the distances are set to. And this works a lot like fill it. It shows you what it's currently set to, and then you can change it if you need. So if I want to bevel these maybe to three foot horizontally and vertically, then I'm going to type D for distance, and then three feet. And I can accept the same number automatically uh, for the other distance by hitting space or enter. Now I can just select the two objects, my two lines. Click once and click the other line, and it's given me that beveled corner. So the distance relates to the horizontal uh, distance and the vertical distance. So if I measure from corner to corner, uh, you'll notice the distance on the hypotenuse is four foot two and some change, but my X and Y are the three feet that I entered. When you start the chamfer command and next, the second time, it will remember your distances. So if you want to reuse them, it's much quicker. All you need to do is select the two entities, or you could use the distance option to go back and change them again. Now I'm going to go through the divide command. Divide command is a little confusing for most new users at first because it looks like nothing really happens. But what happens is it places points equally spaced along an entity that you're dividing. So this is great if you're uh, laying out window mullions or cabinets in the elevation view and you want them all to be equal in size, things like that. The divide command is very handy. So I have this line. Uh, I want to divide it, let's say, into five segments. If I wanted to just divide it into two segments, it's easy because I have a midpoint. If I wanted to divide it into four segments, a lot of times I just use that midpoint, draw another line, and then uh, use the midpoint of that to divide it into four. So there are other little tricks you don't always have to use divide. But uh, if you want to something like five pieces or six or eight or whatever, then the divide command starts to become a lot easier. So I'm going to start divide with div. And then it says select object to divide. So I'm choosing this line. And then it simply asks the number of segments. So if I'm doing five, I can type five and enter. Again, it looks like nothing happens. But what you have to do is look for the points along the line. Points normally are just very small dots unless you change your point style. What I'm going to do is uh, look at my OSNAP settings by right clicking on OSNAP and pressing settings. And I want to turn on my node OSNAP. And you'll see why in one second. So now I'm going to start a line and I'm going to start my mouse at the end of the line. I'm not going to click, I'm just going to hover and then drag it down the line until I see a different OSNAP show up. And there you can see is my node. That's the point that got dropped when I did the divide command. So I can click 
and draw a vertical line. So now I can either copy this line down from this node to the next node, like that, from node to node, and now I have five equal segments. That's one option. Another option that I could have done, because they're five equal segments, is I can copy this line and copy it from the end point of the line to the end point of the new line, and then to the next line and the next line. So really, you only need to use that node about one time, and then you can uh, copy it by using the spacing and your base point and second point in order to uh, lay out the rest of the spaces. So that's the divide command. Again, very handy for cabinet elevation, window mullions, and lots of other things that you want to be divided equally. So for my next modify command, I'm gonna go through align and uh, also rotate with reference, which can work in a very similar way. It's very common to use a line when you're um, setting up furniture and you want to align it with a wall, um, but there are countless other reasons why a line is a very handy tool. So I have an angled wall and a straight piece of furniture, or you could also use this with a uh, angled piece of furniture and a straight wall. Obviously, I'm going to be aligning the furniture with the wall and not vice versa, because you know, you're not going to rotate a building around one piece of furniture. So I'm going to start the align command with AL and select my chair and then I'm going to hit space or enter because that's the only object that I need to select so I want to move on. Now you have to pay attention to the command line and it makes this command pretty easy to use. It says specify first source point. So the source means which part am I moving? Well I'm moving the chair so I'm going to pick the midpoint of the back of the chair. Now it says specify first destination point. So where do I want that midpoint of the chair to go? I'm going to choose the midpoint of this line or uh, this wall line, excuse me. Now it asks second source point. So basically it's establishing the current angle of the chair is what it's really doing. So I'm going to click this corner of the chair and now it asks second destination point. So now it's establishing the angle of the wall I'm aligning it with. So I'll pick the end point of the wall line here. Now, you have to answer the next question carefully. Specify third source point. I don't really need any more points. I've given it enough information. So I'm going to hit enter to continue. And it asks now, scale objects based on alignment points. So it has the ability to actually enlarge the chair in the process because you can see the points on the chair that I chose are closer together than the points on the wall. So it could actually scale it at the same time, which is a handy capability but I don't really want to mess up the chair and make it a gigantic chair. So I'm going to say no. And the default answer is N in my brackets. So I'm going to just hit enter. And you can see how it shifted it over and rotated it at the same time. So the move aspect went from that first source point to the first destination point. And then the rotation went from the angle of the source points to the angle of the destination points. So that's how the align command can make that very easy move and rotate all at the same time. Now, another option in how to do this is the rotate command. So I just hit undo in order to demonstrate that option for you. So I'm gonna first move the chair over to do this option. Now I'm gonna use the same midpoint of the chair to the midpoint of that wall. And now I'm gonna do the rotate command. I'll select my object first, RO, enter for rotate. Now my base point is gonna be that point where the two overlap, the midpoints. I'll click there, and now it normally asks rotation angle, but I don't, I'm don't. i pretending that I don't know the angle here because the whole idea is I don't want to have to measure the angles and do the math and all that, so I'm going to do the reference option, which is R, enter. Now I can specify a, rota or a reference angle. So this is the original angle of the chair, basically. In order to specify an angle, you're always giving it two points. So I'm going to click the same base point again and then the endpoint uh, below that. So now you can see how my cursor has kind of grabbed hold of the chair by using those reference points, and it asks for the new angle. So now I can click the endpoint of that um, wall line, and it has rotated it to be exactly aligned with the wall line. So again, I didn't care what the actual angles were, but by moving it over and then using the reference option, I was able to establish the uh, aligning alignment between the chair and the wall. Um, so again, the align command or the rotate command, either one can make that much easier than having to do the math.
The next command I want to show you is match properties. And this is a very useful and basic command, but um, one that I haven't had a chance to go over yet. You'll see it has a large icon up in the panel. If you had the uh, um, ribbon showing as mine was earlier in this video, where you have the clipboard section, match properties is actually on that clipboard section. It looks a little smaller, but you can find it either way. Uh, the shortcut for match properties is MA. So I'm going to just hit MA because I'm a typer. And basically it's going to match the properties of one object to another. And that could mean layer, color, line type, line weight, um, any of those types of properties, along with a lot of other properties, can be matched. So it asks for the source object. So let's say that I uh, want to match from this object to this object. And you can see how it made the second object yellow um, that I clicked on. Now it stays in destination mode, so I can cl continue clicking on whatever I want to be on that yellow layer, and it will make everything yellow. I can do a big window around everything, and now everything is on the yellow layer. So again, let me repeat that. You do MA or use the icon. Select your source object. In other words, what do you like the properties of? Let's say this. And then what do you want to apply that to? And then you click on whatever you want. So a lot of times this is much faster than having to select a bunch of objects and then change their layer manually.